Hello everyone, welcome back to the Life After Life channel. Dave here. Chevy's making some noises that Chevy's don't normally make. Can you guys hear that? I thought it was originally, I was out on the road and I thought it was something in the front end in the suspension, but now I'm sitting at idle, parked, still hearing noise. You hear that? That can't be good. The noise doesn't change with, with the idle. You give it a little gas. This can't be. I smell something burning. Now, Chevys are a little bit temperamental, but they don't normally catch fire, right? <coughs> <It's>, <coughs> it smells electrical. I'll get back to you. No smoke underneath. No smoke coming from under the hood. I see, I, I should have known I was in big trouble when the stereo quit working. The stereo quit working, which is a bad thing, because then you can hear everything. You hear all these noises. I don't see any smoke under here. I don't smell anything. Jeez. I need to redecorate under here. I'm tired of looking at this. I just looked back at the video, and it looked like the smoke was coming from the passenger side. The passenger door area. I don't know, we got a power lock. It still works, I think. Power locks, power windows, everything still works on this thing. I don't know what could be, except for the stereo. Never hear anything good anyway. Ah, oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, now there's a clue right there. I bet you. Yep, I know exactly what it is. There's a there's a fuse box right there. But there's a whole lot more happening underneath there. Oh, I've been waiting for this day. Yep. Yep, I know what it is. I know exactly what it is. If you have I've been waiting for this problem for a long time. This is a real engineering glitch. If you have a Chevy Impala, I don't care what year it is, 2003 on up to, I don't know, 11 maybe, chances are pretty darn good that you don't have a rear defroster working anymore. <laughs> and unfortunately, I can't test it today. It's sunny and warm, which is weird. If my defroster worked, it would be, you know, if it worked, it would be sunny and warm and night. But anyway, these Chevys, these rear defrosters have a big flaw and I'm about to show you what I'm talking about. These Chevy engineers, you know, they're, they're really, they're really slick. They think they're slick. You know, I'm going to write a song. I'm going to write a song about Chevy engineers. <laughs> like a box of rocks. They're about as dumb as they could be. Like a box of rocks. Right here, right up underneath this kick panel here, is a very large wiring harness connector. And that's where everything goes bad. Now this engineer must have been a woman or something, because he made this easy. You just grab it in the right spot and pull. Off it comes. Move the carpet out of the way. And this is what I'm talking about right here. You just have to squeeze the tabs. Squeeze the tabs together.
Okay, try again there. Squeeze. And flip the lever, and it comes apart. And right here, let me move the camera so you can see this. I see it already. Here's a better view. Right here. Completely burned away. Gone. I'm lucky to be alive. See that? Now, I've fixed a f quite a few of these over the last few years, and if I remember correctly, it's a purple wire. So I have to find that sucker. Found the purple wire. It's a purple wire going in, and a black wire coming out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take another piece of wire and connect the two ends and bypass the connector all together. And I've had this piece of wire saved for just this occasion. Take one of these handy dandy bullet connectors. Okay. Here's one side. Find a pair of pliers. Needle nose. Good enough. Crimp the ends. There's one side. I gotta get me one of those, what do they call it? Mechanics helpers. I get Diane, but she don't like to get dirty. She's afraid she's gonna break a nail. So once you get those connected, these are these are heat shrink. Heat, heat shrinkable so you get a little heat on them and they shrink and you get a tighter connection a little goes a long way there's one there's two I like to be double sure, so you get your electrical tape. Tape her up real good. One side done. Neighbors are watching me. They're like, what the heck is he doing now? Okay, there she is. You want to tuck that out of the way. Don't forget to plug this back in. Close the lever. Chuck everything back in. It just cracks me up how that just lays in there. It just lays in there like that. Nothing holding it down. Put the 
carpet back in place. Put the kick panel or whatever you want to call this thing back in. Like it never happened. Now we had, now we had to test the thing. Key on. I'm Jonathan Messenger, broadcasting to you live from my home. Can you believe that? Stereo's working. I have no idea how I fixed that. That's got to be coincidence. Okay, you turn your rear defroster on. Get your old voltmeter out and test it. Okay, so we put it on volts, DC, DC volts, ground it to the body, touch here we get, we got, we're supposed to get 6 volts, we got 5.93, 5.95, good enough. I love outsmarting these Chevy engineers, you know. They charge you $400 to $500 at the old dealership for that job. True story. We did it for zero. Okay, maybe 12, 12 cents worth of black tape and $1.27 for wire connectors. Not bad. You know, there was, a, there was an engineer crossing the road. Not a chicken, an engineer. And one day, when he was crossing the road, a frog, a frog, called out to him and said, If you kiss me, I'll turn into a beautiful princess. So he bent over, he picked up the frog, put it in his pocket. The frog spoke up again and said, If you kiss me and turn me back into a beautiful princess, I'll stay with you for one week. The engineer again took the frog out of his pocket, smiled at it, and returned it to his pocket. So the frog yells this time. This time he yells out, or she, I guess it's a she. If you kiss me and turn me back into a princess, I'll stay with you for a week and do anything you want. Again, the engineer takes out the frog, smiles at it, and puts it back in the pocket. Finally, the frog asks, what's the matter? I told you I'm a beautiful princess, that I'll stay with you for a week, and I'll do anything you want. Why won't you kiss me? Then the engineer said, look, I'm an engineer. I don't have... Time for a girlfriend, but a talking frog? Now that's cool. Yeah. Engineer. By the way, in case you're wondering about the noise, noises my car was making earlier, I figured out what it was. I figured out, I found out the hard way what it was. You never believe this is one for the record books. This is one, I don't think I can blame it on an engineer. I open the trunk and out pops what I think was a groundhog. It was either a groundhog or a, a possum or something. How he got in there, I don't know. We were picnicking earlier, maybe somebody left the trunk open too long and he got in there, I don't know. That's an awful lot of noise from a little critter like that. But I never, I never have a camera running when all the good stuff happens. Speaking of good stuff. Hello? Huh? What are you doing? I'm... I'm supposed to... I'm the one that's supposed to say hello. I picked up the phone and you said hello. How... How did you know it was going to be me? Well, it's cold-blooded. I don't know anybody else. Alright, anyhow. What? You heard? What'd you hear? You heard I was writing songs. How did you hear that? You're, you're, you're 60 miles away. Okay, 61 miles away. How did you hear that? Figure your speech. I was... I was just making a joke. 
A joke. How did you... You want to hear it? Oh, no. I, that's probably not going to happen. It's, it's, not, it's not finished yet. It's a work in progress. Anyway, that's not why you called, is it? It is. What was I doing? Why? I don't, I don't want to tell you what I was doing. Just... Because you'll make fun of me. You always make fun of me, and then you hang up. I was working on the car. No, the Chevy. <laughs> See, why are, you, why are you laughing at me? Why am I laughing? I'm the victim. I can laugh. I do, yeah. I, huh? Yeah. I have a joke for you. Okay. You gonna hang up though before I get to the punchline? You always hang up on me. Depends on the joke. Okay, well this is a semi-good one. Okay, there were three men and they were sentenced to death by guillotine. Okay, well. Okay, well they don't all have to be men, then, okay? One of them, we'll make one of them a woman. How's that? Okay, so two men and a woman were sentenced to death by guillotine. A priest, a psychologist, oh, I'm sorry, psychiatrist, and an engineer. Which one was the girl? That's kind of a dumb question. Well, first, the first one to go was the priest. So before he went, he asked, can I face upward towards heaven and face my creator? His wish was granted. The blade fell, but it stopped a half inch from his neck, sparing his life. It stopped a half inch from his neck. Okay, so the executioner, he goes, since the guillotine has spared you, so shall be your life. You are allowed to leave. All right. So the next to go was... Okay. The next to go was the psychiatrist. And she asked, May I also face upwards to look towards God before my death? And again, the guillotine stopped just short of her, and her life was spared. Yeah, she was a psychiatrist. What else would she be? That's not the that's not the funny part. Okay. So the engineer was next, okay? He was last, and he too asked to face upwards, given what had happened to the first two, right? So as he lay there, he looked up at the mechanism and he said, "Aha! I see the problem. See where the rope has jumped out of the pulley?" See where the rope has jumped out of the pulley. He's an engineer. Hello? You're still there. <laughs> you don't you don't think that's funny. Weren't you weren't you married to an engineer? Oh, that's right, he was a lawyer. <laughs> that's, even, that's even funnier. <laughs> Anyhow, you what? On your way what? Huh? You? No, you're not. Thanks. Thanks for the warning. All right. I gotta go. Bye. I cannot believe she did that to me. I, got, I broke my glasses and everything. Didn't really do much housework today. Well, anyway, 
that's our video for this week. Thanks a lot for watching. Think about subscribing. That's always a good thing. Hit the like button. Next week, maybe we'll do something on, oh, I don't know, Toyotas. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be a rare thing for my Toyota break. Okay, thanks a lot. We'll see you.